Masters, mistresses, the doctor requires materials in order to maintain the TARDIS and ensure continued functionality. He similarly requires carbon-based comestibles to sustain his own biological functions and existence. Master would never say this, but he requires aid beyond that supplied by this unit in order to acquire these. To aid the doctor in his various tasks and creations, this can be most effectively achieved via Patreon or Substack subscriptions, or through donations directly to PayPal, or if you desire physical goods in return for your contributions, written accounts of my travels with the Doctor are also available on Amazon. Links are in the description below. Thank you, Masters, Mistresses. Beware! Ah! Oh. oh, Sir Ivanhoe! Yet again, your king's life is held safe in your hands. We are in your debt! Ivanhoe, now that we have taken the city of Acre, I would reward you for your loyalty and courage. You have but to ask, and take what you will. Your Majesty, I have but one desire, and it is not for treasure. My heart's wish is to return home to Rotherwood, and to earn my father's forgiveness for the dishonor I have brought to his name. Dishonor? You, Sir Ivanhoe? How came such a thing from so brave a knight? Sire, my father, Cedric of Rotherwood, has in his care the Lady Rowena, who is his ward. He wished her to marry the noble Lord Athelstan, and so join two strong Saxon lines. This would strengthen the Saxon cause, my father thought, and lead us towards independence from Norman rule. Uh, this is folly. You speak of an old wound, Ivanhoe, one which should have healed long since. Sire, when I had thought on it, I said as much to him myself. It was then Rowena and I declared our love for each other. 
My father became furious and said I betrayed both him and my Saxon blood. I was banished from my father's house. He hoping Rowena's heart would reach out to Athelstan were I not there. This is an injustice to a brave knight. Scribe, write a letter to Cedric of Rotherwood. Write of his son's courage and loyalty in our service. Write to soften his Saxon heart, even if the letter comes under a Norman king's seal. Take the letter, Sir Ivanhoe, and go you. Go you to your own place and to your lady. Go with my blessing, home to Rotherwood. Come, Rowena, my dear. No smile for this fool's antics. My Lord Cedric, the one person who could cheer my heart is far and far away. I will not be drawn into this matter again, my lady. You would do well to forget. Gerth, see who comes on such a night. My lord, three travellers seeking shelter from this foul night. What travellers? Who are they, man? Lord, all are returned from the Holy Land. One a pilgrim, and the others Norman knights. Normans? Blood of my ancestors, that they should look for shelter here. Well, Saxon or Norman, I will not have them say Cedric of Rotherwood denied them hospitality. Announce them. Crusader knights, perhaps they have news of... I will seek no news. The one who disobeyed me is no longer my son. My Lord Cedric, here be Sir Brian de Bois Gilbert, Templar Knight, and Sir Reginald Front de Boeuf, Lord of Torkelston Castle. Warm yourself by the fire, pilgrim. Bid you welcome to Rotherwood, sirs. I present you to my ward, the Lady Rowena. My lady, we have met before at the Eastertide Fair. You have grown in beauty, though I had thought that impossible. I have thought of you much since then. I would ask you to guard your tongue, Sir Knight. How came you to Rotherwood? The storm struck as we rode, sir, and we mislaid our path. We chanced upon the pilgrim, and he guided us to this shelter in return for a seat on one of our baggage horses. You are free of my table and my house, then. Do you stay long? This night only. By your leave. We journey to the tournament at Ashby. Where the rabble may see the excellence of Norman knights. <laughs> the Norman knights in England, I, The best of our Saxon lords fight with King Richard in the Holy Land. <laughs> uh, we have ourselves but now returned from that crusade. And indeed the king has a gallant host of English warriors there. Second only to the Norman knights who have fought the Saracen hordes. Second to none. I say the English chivalry were second to none in the defense of the Holy Land. Well said, fellow. What would you know of this pilgrim to make so bold a claim? I too am newly returned from Palestine, Sir Knight. I was present at the tournament King Richard held to celebrate the taking of St. John of Acre. Go on, good pilgrim, please. 
Of all the knights who engaged that day, only one Norman prevailed, and he was that great and good king, Richard of the Lion's Heart. I forgive him his Norman blood. Sir Eustace de Bracy, a famous Norman, was soon unhorsed by Sir Edwin Turnham. A fine Saxon name. Sir Thomas Moulton's lance unseated the Lord of Torkelston. You have an ill tongue, Pilgrim. Perhaps it needs cropping. <laughs> Hold, sir. There will be no threats nor swordplay under my roof. Go on, good Pilgrim. There was only one other, a lesser knight. I cannot remember his name, my lord. Indeed. A strange loss of memory. This lesser knight's lance unseated me to my shame. And his title is known well enough hereabouts. It was the Lord Cedric's own son, the Knight of Ivanhoe. My son. My brave Ivanhoe. Aye, brave enough for a Saxon Englishman. I say this, were he in England this day, I would challenge him to meet me in the tournament at Ashby. And I. Bold words. And all the bolder with Ivanhoe away, sirs. But I know him well, and I give you my pledge. If he returns from Palestine, he will meet you. I will go surety for that. And this my pledge. Your heart upon my sword point, Pilgrim, if he fails to do so. And more, I will proclaim him coward on the walls of every Templar court in Christendom. No man will ever call Ivanhoe coward, Sir Brian. I add my pledge to the pilgrims. No. No need, my dear. The formal challenge to single combat has been made, and it stands, or there is no chivalry in England. Gerth, see that our guests have food, and show them to their beds. Oh, Pilgrim, you frighten me. Be silent and come with me. Where do you take me, and why? You will know presently. But why here, where no man's eye can see us? I tell you plain, if you plot against my Lord Cedric and look to me for help, you are wrong. <laughs> Good steadfast girth. A pity you do not have a nose as keen as fangs. Sir Ivanhoe, it is you! Rise and stand, faithful Gerth. We have but little time. I take this risk for one purpose only. I must have a war horse and armor for the coming tournament, and you must help me. Your horse fury is here yet, my master, and well cared for, and your old armor. <laughs> you will fight the Normans then? In truth I will, and defeat their arrogance. So I hope to earn my father's forgiveness. But I must be away before dawn. And I, for you will need a squire. <laughs> <laughs> and a dog too, it seems. Poor traveller! As poor as us, old man. Let's see the colour of your money. But I have nothing, I tell you. Oh, lay, he's got gold hidden in that there saddle. <laughs> and the dog is worth stealing anyway. <laughs> Down, old man! Oh. Oh. Mercy me! This is a terrible thing! Stop that noise, or I'll club ya! Release him, knaves! What? For a swordless pilgrim? Oh, thank you, good sirs, thank you. You have saved my life. 
How can I repay you? No payment, friend. What is your name? I am Isaac of York, kind pilgrim. I travel to meet my daughter Rebecca in Sheffield and thence to the tournament at Ashby. Then we will escort you to the crossroads. From there you will be safe. May, may you be rewarded for your kindness, good sirs. And how may I call you? My friend here is Gerth. I remain nameless, for so I have vowed until I have proved worthy to bear it once more. Again, I say, is there no way I can repay you? My thanks, good Isaac. I desire nothing. A bargain with you, pilgrim. If I can guess what you most need, will you accept my gift of it? Even if you guess true, you would not have such wealth as my wish would demand. Perhaps I am not so poor, good sir. Let me try. Try then, Isaac of York. I say then, you would wish for stout armor, a strong shield, and a knightly sword. What sorcery is this? No sorcery, friend Gurth. Even an old man has eyes to see. And I have seen a pilgrim who fights skillfully, and whose robe sometimes does not hide the trappings of a knight. Yet such armor as would perhaps shame a knight at a great tournament. You will let me equip and arm you, sir, for my grateful pleasure. I will accept, Isaac. But how can you pay for such things? You are not the only one who disguises himself and his purpose, Sir Pilgrim. Armor and sword will await you at Ashby, upon my true word. Father, do you know yet who the knight is? The one you gave the armor to? Not yet, Rebecca. We must wait and see. How shall we know him? <laughs> by the armor I paid for, my dear. And by his shield. A strange device in truth. His Royal Highness, Prince John. I see Isaac the Merchant has brought his daughter. That is a rare beauty by my faith. It will be my right to declare her queen of love and beauty when I am this day's champion. Not so. It will be Rowena, Cedric the Saxon's lovely ward. I shall name her when I hold the champion's right. I think, noble knight, there can be but one champion this day. I shall watch with interest to see which of you it may be. Go then, and good fortune attend you both. Let us commence. Harold, the tournament begins. The Norman champion, Sir Brian de Bois Gilbert, and Sir Reginald Front de Boeuf challenge all comers to single combat.
hope gone. Bois Gilbert will be named champion. Oh, well may the Normans gloat over us. My lord, look! You had best confess your sins, fellow. You put your life in danger. I am fitter to meet death than you, Templar, and less likely. To your place, braggart, and look your last upon the sun. Two champions after all. Who was that black knight? I know not, sire. But he is gone, and I fear a danger from this English crowd if the disinherited one is not declared champion. I now declare the disinherited knight the champion of the day. Sir disinherited knight, it is now your right and privilege to name the Queen of Love and Beauty. Long live Rowena, Queen of Love and Beauty! Long live the Saxon Princess! England for the English! Ivanhoe! My son? My daughter, we must help this noble youth. My lord Cedric, please allow us to help. I am Isaac of York. A friend, my lord. A good friend. My daughter Rebecca is skilled in the arts of healing. She can save your son. My thanks, Isaac of York. Gert, a little quickly. 
We must get him to bed and treatment. My lord, your son revives. Ivanhoe. Oh, my dear love. Father, Rowena, I must explain. No, my son. The faithful Gerth has told me all. I am a foolish old man, blinded by stubbornness. I ask your forgiveness. And I yours. Rest, Sir Knight. You have lost much blood, and you must rest before we travel. We go to Rotherwood, brave son. Soon you will be safe at home. You call yourselves Normans? We have lost all this day, thanks to you. These Saxons must be taught a lesson. When I meet this disinherited knight again, he will taste my sword. This I swear! Fine words, but words are not enough. Sire, I have a plan. The Saxon Lord Cedric has taken the wounded knight under his care. They and the merchant Isaac leave for Rotherwood. Now, it is my idea that we could... This is no way for a knight to travel, pulled like a doll in a cart. Would you like me to strap your armor on over your wound, Master? You'd really grumble then. I do no more than give us a chance to find help. Hold now! Why such haste in Sherwood Forest? You should know, outlaw. Your men hold our people prisoner behind us. My men? Not so, good sir. My men rest in our camp. So say you. What is your word worth? A nameless outlaw? Outlaw, yes. Nameless, no. And my word is my bond. You may call me Robin. Robin the Hood. Robin Hood? I waited till you had eaten, Sir Ivanhoe. Ill news sits better on a full stomach. While our king has been fighting the Saracen hordes in the Holy Land, his evil brother, the Prince John, has conspired with the Norman barons to usurp his kingdom. But King Richard is of Norman stock also. Indeed, Gerth. But I know him to be both a just man and a good king. His desire is to unite our country and prevent bloodshed. His return is long overdue, however. I fear he may be unaware of his brother's evil deeds. Aye. Prince John imposes ruinous taxes on the Saxon peasants and robs good noblemen of their lands to reward his Norman lackeys. And that, Sir Ivanhoe, is exactly my fate. John has stripped me of my title and my lands. I am now an outlaw in my own country. Now my father and beloved have fallen victim to his evil barons. My men tell me they have been taken to Torkelston. Torkelston? From de Berf's castle? What black deed is this? The deed of a black heart. He disguised his men for this, so that my good men and I would be blamed if word should get out. He will pay, he and his. Even if I have to stand before the walls of Torkelson with but my single sword. 
Two swords, master. More than that. Your father, Cedric the Saxon, is a good friend to the rights of Englishmen. You shall not lack English swords to aid you. I thank you, Robin. Are you recovered enough to ride? Aye. To ride and to fight. <laughs> then let's away. We meet the main force of my men at the edge of the forest. And someone else who waits there also. Gilbert, and you, Front de Boeuf. What villainy is this? No villainy, my lady. No more than the taking of what is ours by right. All England belongs to Normandy, lady, and all that is in it also. Where is my father? He is safe enough. He and the Saxon Cedric are resting below, in the dungeon. For what purpose? For ransom? Is that why you hold us here? Ransom of a kind, yes. My friend here has a covetous eye for the pretty Rebecca and her father's purse. And I? Well, my little Saxon beauty, I have long wanted to own you. And Rotherwood and its lands, of course. This is madness, Sir Knight. Never! Never! You have this night only to give favorable consideration to our... Uh, proposals. Otherwise, you may have to watch your menfolk enjoying the pleasures of Torkelston's torture chamber. No sign of that other one. I am here. Well met, Robin. And you, good Ivanhoe. <laughs> know you not who speaks, then? Come. I'll uncover. I thought you were still in Palestine. Aye, Sir Ivanhoe. That was my wish. So that I might observe those who would bring this fair England to shame and misery. Off your knees now, brave lads. I came in secret so that my rascally brother John would not know. So that I could see for myself what evil work he and my Norman barons carry out in my absence. Then this night's work should show you well enough, sire. Aye, Robin. If what you have told me is so, there will be a reckoning to pay at Torkelston. Let's to horse! Lady Rowena, surely you will reconsider your answer. You foul fiends! Say nothing, Rowena! Nothing! A word can stop it, Saxon. A word from your daughter and his. My 
them and lock them here. Then follow to the battlements. What is that noise? What is happening? No need for you to worry, mad woman. Some outlaws trying to take me lord's castle. Not your lord's. My father's. The gallant talker of Torkelston. Murdered by the man you call lord. Hold your tongue, mad Ulrika. Your father's dead. And his castle is ours, and you should be glad to be alive. I live only for revenge. To see Fron de Boeuf banished. I will have revenge. Uh, no.
the devil himself. The keep has been taken. Then let us take what is left to us and escape. Merciful heaven, leave my daughter. No! No! Now for you, my beauty. You have cost me dearly. Ah! Coward! Dog. Cold, her life is forfeit. Ivanhoe! You will not escape me, Norman. Revenge! Curse it, witch! Stand and fight, Front de Boeuf. Burns, we must away. Ivanhoe, Bois Gilbert has taken Rebecca. We must find her. We shall have no fear. All is lost. Surrender to the king. Take two men and go after them. But stay clear of my arrow's flight. Here, my lady. Let me hope. Uh, you're in safe hands now.
Where is Gerth? He was injured trying to help me. I'm here, my lady. Thank heaven you're all safe. Ah, brave Gerth. Look! The battlements! I would ask your permission to lead my men back to our forest camp. No, my good Robin. I'll not have you outlawed and hiding in Shorewood. I go to raise an army to drive my wicked brother, Prince John, from my throne. I would have you and your men with me. Would you come? Aye, sire, with a right good will. My Lord King, to raise an army will need gold. What wealth I have is yours for this worthy purpose. Well spoken, Isaac of York, and most gratefully accepted. Sire, you know I will come to your call, I and mine. All Saxons will come. Speak not of Saxon or Norman, Cedric. It is time we were one. Speak of Englishmen! I will summon you, my friend, have no fear. But first, you have other matters to attend to. My Lord King, a wedding to arrange. Will you not come, sire? It would be our honor and pleasure, sire. And mine. But there is a greater need, brave Ivanhoe. Yet I make you a marriage gift, you and the Lady Rowena. That rogue shall spend his days deep in the dungeon. His lands lie next to your fathers at Rutherwood, and they shall be yours. I thank you, sire. We thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 